today we would uh, continue with uh, another interesting dimension of uh, the human adjustment process, uh, where we would be talking about the general nature of the adjustive behavior. Okay. Uh, these things are too commonsensical, you all know it, but uh, we are trying to you know uh, put everything uh, in place, so that we understand the whole dynamics of the human adjustment. All human reactions are supposed to be holistic in nature. No? So, you do not give fragmented responses uh, when you encounter a situation, rather it has to be a complete, a wholesome response. Second important characteristic is uh, that all the reactions are supposed to be economical. You try your best to save as much as you can in terms of giving your behavior. Some of the reactions could be automatic, some of the responses could be well planned. Okay. Then the reactions also have certain emotional components. For example, uh, if you are frustrated, it is bound to elicit anger. If you have a perception of danger, then it might trigger fear. If you have a perception of threat, it might elicit anxiety. Okay. Uh, little later when we come to aggressive behavior we will discuss it at length. There we would once again look at uh, know this frustration, uh, know aggression hypothesis, where basically it is told that anger is always triggered by certain sense of frustration. The moment you realize that you are helpless, things are going beyond your control, this is the last option of having control over uh, the situation. And then reactions may either be task oriented or it might be defense oriented. No? So, <coughs> task oriented reaction would mean, uh, you remember when we were talking about uh, that example, uh, where we took the whole range of uh, reactions possible in one given situation. So, task oriented reactions would be that you have the task at hand, you break it into multiple components as many parts as you can. And then for each of uh, the constituent element of the problem, you identify your solution, a way of handling it, you execute it. That could be one way, if the task uh, no, is too simple and it, there is no need to split it into multiple uh, components, then in the wholesome fashion you just uh, no, face it head on and then you try to resolve it. The other set of reaction would be defense oriented reaction, where the idea is not to confront the situation and resolve it, but the idea is to safeguard one's own ego task oriented reaction patterns and defense oriented reaction patterns, little later in the same uh, no, sequence of slides, we will come to them at length. Another uh, important characteristics of healthy development are that one should have an adequate frame of reference. What actually frame of reference uh, means is that with uh, it would you know, take up and uh, take an example of uh, say a photo frame. Okay. So, you have a picture and accordingly you uh, try to you know have a frame of a proportionate size, wherein that picture can be fitted in. Okay. The choice is yours, what type of frame you choose, but then the size of the frame you do not choose, size of the frame is defined by the photograph. Okay. So, similarly uh, in our life when you uh, encounter several type of situations, Gradually what happens that you start defining life and the way things are in this world in certain order and that starts you know, making a boundary within which you try to explain worldly occurrences. So, this becomes a frame of reference now. So, actually your accurate reality, possibility and value assumptions, these three things will come little later once again. Okay concerning yourself or the world, okay, they actually you know get fitted into this frame of reference. Now, frame of reference has a very interesting thing to do. We will take a couple of examples. Say, uh, somebody who has uh, overall uh, uh, no, by and large uh, not so restricted uh, uh, life experience, means you are the only child in the family, uh, you belong to an affluent background, uh, you ask your parents for certain things, you get them very easily, you go to a school where uh, no, you are taken care of. 
school tries to provide you the best facilities it can. You can demand certain things from your school and the school will try to give you those things. Uh, you have found friends who by and large will you know uh, surrender their own choices to yours and therefore, by and large you have experienced life as if I can get what I want, my uh, feelings, my desires, my way of thinking should supersede the others. If this is how you have been grown up, gradually what happens you start looking world this way. So, later on if you experience a situation where uh, your choices are not being accepted, okay, uh, your demands are not being fulfilled, it becomes extremely difficult for you to adjust. Okay. And one of the primary uh, you know, uh, responsibility lies with the fact that you have your own way of looking at things, okay. because you have never seen uh, the life from the perspective of others. Let us take some uh, real life examples, I would not name, but uh, uh, when uh, the government of India suggested once uh, that uh, most of their ministers they should you know try to uh, cut on their uh, expenses and therefore, they should fly economy class. Uh, one of the minister okay, even uh, tweeted you know, stating that economy class he compared it to cattle class. This was the word that he had used. You know. uh, we don't take names here, no. So, but you know who the person was. We are not interested in who the person or was or whether he was uh, X or Y in his capacity, in his official capacity. But this shows the frame of reference, you know, because you have been born and brought up in a different situation. For thirty years, you have been at a very different place where you have not experienced life this way. Imagine uh, economy class of uh, a air carrier in India to a general compartment of a train. Okay. Then uh, it is equivalent to hell then. Now, if this is cattle class, then what is the general compartment of uh, a local train? Okay. There are uh, many, many remote localities in our country, uh, where uh, no, you have one or two buses connecting them uh, from the cities and that too in a very bad shape, it is all full of passengers. Okay. Uh, if you uh, just go to uh, the archives of uh, some of these print media, uh, when uh, two, three years back when there was this uh, flood in <coughs> Koshi river in Bihar okay. and you see the images. No? And uh, very interestingly you would realize that uh, people are struggling for their own life, but at the same time they are not ditching their uh, cattles, no? the goats, buffaloes, uh, no cows, they would carry all of them. Goats and uh, goats, you know, many a times you would realize that uh, no, on the shoulder you have a human baby and you have a goat and then the person is uh, swimming you know, completely submerged in the water and is trying to get out of uh, that flooded area. Compare that type of uh, cultural background, somebody who has experienced life like that okay, and you say that this is a cattle class. There is a complete disharmony between the perception of the two individuals. Somebody who thinks that uh, saving life of my son is as important as saving life of the goat which I have uh, with me. Okay. Somebody who says, oh fine, three passengers are made to sit very close to each other and when there is a very uh, no, narrow leg space and therefore, it is equivalent to cattle class. Okay. That reflects the frame of mind. Okay. Frame of mind, uh, what happens gradually is that with uh, uh, little experience, okay, you are still trying to draw the lines. Okay. Once you realize uh, that you have experienced life sufficient and therefore, you have drawn this line, then you start evaluating all worldly affairs with respect to your frame of reference. So, it is like the earlier example that we took that you take a photograph and then try to put it in a frame. You select a frame which will suit this size of the photograph, but in life with reference to frame of reference that does not happen. You develop your frame of reference first based on certain life experiences and then all life experiences you, you try to fit into that frame. <coughs> what is uh, no, uh, little demanding and also you know it uh, makes 
excessive demand from an adjustment view point is that the moment you realize that your x life experience that you are trying to fit into your frame of reference does not fit, you consider that there is something improper with the situation. You do not consider that my frame of reference needs to be revised. Okay. Say for example, uh, uh, if I ask you uh, that uh, visualize when you hear certain words, just visualize uh, that uh, word and tell me what type of image do you have, I will do that exercise here. Okay. Uh, instructor of a course here in IIT. Okay. Visualize the moment you hear uh, no instructor of a course, what type of image comes to your mind. Okay. Now, I will ask some of you, you tell me what type of image came to your mind. The person with uh, spec. Okay. So, a person with uh, no specs and the glass should be little thicker. Okay. So, that is uh, no the image that comes to his mind. You tell me what is the image that came to your mind. Someone who is very interactive. Someone who is very interactive. Okay. Yes, you tell me what what was the image that came to your mind. My image. We had seen each other earlier, but still that image came to my, your mind. Oh, great! It's not to please me. Sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, somebody from the second row, you tell me what image came to your mind? 40, 50 year old person with 40, 50 year old, uh, year old person with specs, color of the specs also came, thickness of the glass, usually it happens, no? this is how we visualize. Okay. Anybody else who had some peculiarity you know, in the visualization compared to what you heard? Okay, so, by and large you had similar type of thing. Usually, you know you think of uh, grey hairs. Okay. So, the more grey you are in terms of your hair, the more knowledgeable you are. If you are bald, very good. Okay. A spec should be little thicker, uh, should not be stylish, should be you know brownish or black, completely black. Okay. If you have little more wrinkles, it suits the uh, you know, profession. So, something like this. No? Now, when I ask you to visualize and you visualize things this way, this means that uh, say there is your visualization is driven by your frame of reference. No? Instructor should be like this. Okay. I am excluding uh, his example. No? Uh, now, look at uh, your earlier experiences right in the beginning of the semester, when you saw a couple of instructors entering the room okay, for certain set of courses that you have credited okay, and you realize, oh, I thought something else and the instructor is you no know, grossly uh, you know, different from what I had visualized. This type of mismatches many a time occurs in our life. Okay. The world does not behave the way we want uh, the world to behave. Okay. Now, there is a strong requirement now that either you accept me that even though I am a mismatch, but you are accepted. Okay. But this acceptance will come with due difficulties. It is not easy to accept that my frame of reference as an error. All instructors should be below this size, you no, know, without specs, completely black uh, hairs or mixed hairs. Okay, she can have a specs, but rarely uses it. Stuff like this. Okay. Now, if you extend it to certain things like say religious tolerance, for example. Okay. Here you don't have a choice. <clears throat> whether you like me or not, okay, we have to face each other for the entire semester. Okay. But say for example, when you have the choice of practicing one set of belief and rejecting the other practice, it is much more simpler. You accept one way of life and you condemn all other ways you know, which does not fit into your frame of reference. So, in many situations, you have to adjust in certain situations you can take the liberty of rejecting things to the maximum possible extent. Okay. Frame of reference gradually starts accepting your belief system, what to believe and what not to believe. It starts coloring your entire perception. Okay. So, all types of uh, know, value oriented judgments start uh, know, uh, getting defined by the frame of reference, it gets colored because of the frame of reference. 
and when you make certain assumptions, your assumptions are also guided by the frame of reference. No? So, by and large your frame of reference uh, know, plays a very, very important role when it comes to adjusting with the new life experiences. Okay. I am deviating a bit, but if you are interested, uh, there are a good amount of studies uh, suggesting uh, that uh, achievement in certain domains of knowledge has a correlation with the age of the person. Okay. This is with respect to uh, intelligence and creativity. Okay. So, in with that respect, there are you know based on research findings, it has been proposed that uh, in certain areas, you excel because you are above a certain age. In certain areas, okay, uh, you achieve because you are below certain age. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, major breakthroughs in uh, philosophy okay, uh, has been seen uh, when the person has crossed certain age. No? So, you are above uh, no, uh, certain age, maybe I do not exactly remember, but perhaps 60 plus or so, when you can come forward with much uh, no refined versions of your thought uh, and compare it with say a path breaking type of an idea in physics for example, which will require you to be below if I remember correctly it is 28 or 25. Okay. This means that more and more uh, no information you receive in life, your frame of reference starts you no. Know, you know, becoming more and more brittle. So, you want things to fit into the earlier frame and therefore, you cannot come forward with a path breaking research. Path breaking research would mean that you do not accept any boundary that the earlier theories have proposed okay. and you can still imagine that although these theories are have been proved, they have proven this, but there could be a possibility of completely negating this and going beyond it. Okay. So, with more and more rigid frame of reference, you start uh, know, uh, complying to the earlier versions and therefore, you do not come forward with path breaking finding, but that has to do with creativity and intelligence. Then we come to the another characteristics of healthy development that is essential competencies. No? You feel that there is a need to master certain uh, physical, intellectual, emotional and social skills which are needed you know and that has to do with basically uh, your age and it also has to do with your culture. Okay. So, there are age specific norms in all the culture with respect to how much you should be capable of performing with respect to your uh, physical abilities, with respect to your intellectual capability, with respect to your emotional stability, with respect to your social competence. Okay. So, say for example, uh, in terms of physical growth, okay, uh, up to certain age, the baby is uh, know, pampered to crawl, to uh, know, suck thumbs, okay, uh, to uh, defecate, urinate at the uh, any place, there is no bar on that. But gradually, you realize that uh, know, even in uh, uh, pediatric clinics, we will find that there are growth charts. No? that by this age your baby should be able to hold objects and stand erect. Okay. And if you say that the baby is underperforming, means the baby has achieved that age physically, but is not able to hold objects and stand firmly, then the doctor says that there might be something wrong with the baby. Your baby requires medical attention. Okay. Now, these are uh, no interesting uh, things, because there is a scientifically guided, socially accepted protocol of physical growth. Okay. Now, we will uh, again do the same exercise you know, that you try to uh, know, draw a line and then look at both the ends, what could be the possibility. Now, imagine a situation that you have come to a age, where you are supposed to uh, hold objects and stand firmly and you are not capable of doing that. Okay parents are worried, uh, society feels concerned about uh, your pattern of growth, okay. but after a delayed period, you are capable of doing that, which is fine. Okay. 
imagine a situation that you are still continuously growing chronologically, but you are still not able to do that. Okay. Society feel concerned about you, the medical practitioners say that you are probably a spastic child, you have certain uh, physical uh, anomalies that does not allow you to stand erect. Okay. Now, even though you are not capable of doing that, you have been identified with one or the other uh, uh, physical handicap uh, situation or you are able to come forward with a delayed response to it, society accepts. No? Both the versions of it are completely acceptable. Okay. Only the care giving pattern now changes. Similarly, say after a certain age, people will uh, expect you that fine you should be bell built, okay. but then everybody is not supposed to be a bodybuilder. Okay. Imagine somebody you know um, building muscles and somebody uh, you know, still remaining uh, slim and sleek, not at all getting involved into physical activities, which is fine, both the versions are acceptable, okay. but then there are certain age appropriate norms, uh, which you should certainly be able to achieve. So, if you should be able to you know uh, put on your clothes, if you are able to put off your clothes, if you are able to uh, know eat, play, walk okay, without errors, fine you have achieved certain level of competency. So. But these competencies does not stop there only, you know, usually the medically prescribed uh, pattern of growth. There are certain uh, social expectations that goes little beyond this, where the society will expect that uh, know, if you are physically capable, okay, in certain types of situation you should also be uh, know, willing to or uh, know, you should be generous enough to get involved in such type of acts, which requires your uh, involvement of your physical capability. Okay which usually the, med, uh, the, the medical growth chart will not demand you that, but the social situations, the social expectation will uh, seek such a certain type of help from you. Intellectual capability, once again you know all psychological clinics have uh, this again growth pattern that there are certain age specific requirements you know, that you should be able to grow intellectually up to this level okay, uh, depending on your chronological growth. Again, if you overachieve, fine, you are a bright child. Okay. Uh, there is a word used in psychology <laughs> called gifted children. Okay. Gifted children are those who uh, know usually achieve things before uh, the chronological benchmark that has been uh, otherwise put forth. The other possibility could be that you are still incapable of uh, know handling things and you, are, you cannot come forward with a desired intellectual outcome then you are again designated with some type of a uh, mental anomaly. No? So, it could be one type of mental handicapped uh, situation, it could be learning disability, it could be spect uh, autism spectrum, it could be uh, any type of uh, the problem that does not allow you to perform intellectually the way uh, other children of your age are able to. Okay. Then comes emotional competence. Once again, uh, know in uh, child psychology, people are uh, uh, know taught these things. We won't go into the details of it. Uh, but Jean Piaget was the psychologist who talked about the you know growth pattern of human children, and he talked about physical growth. He talked about emotional growth also. He talked about intellectual growth also. Uh, basically, if you developmental theorists, and after Jean Piaget, also a few theories have come, and all these you know. Uh, uh, theorists basically talk about once again know that there are age specific emotional maturity that you should be able to display. Okay. So, everything has to do with uh, know certain pattern of growth and development. Okay. So, if you are uh, know uh, if you have difficulty uh, exp expressing your emotions, then also it is a cause of concern. If you have difficulty in terms of containing your feelings, it is also an issue of uh, to be thought about. If you have difficulty, you know, in certain cultures, okay, uh, if you have inability in terms of neutralizing your negative feelings, that is also a cause of concern. Once again, what you realize is 
you have a chronological age that you are uh, gradually achieving, you are chronologically increasing every second of your life. There are certain uh, say uh, psychological expectations that by this age a human child should certainly achieve this level of emotional maturity. There are culture specific norms, okay, which you are supposed to comply to okay, and that helps you uh, know stay in harmony with your environment. Say uh, for example, uh, there is a psychological problem called alexithymia. Alexithymia is a situation where you are not able uh, to understand certain types of emotions expressed by others. Okay. So, say for example, you have the choice uh, usually in uh, uh, psychology research shows that we have uh, certain basic emotions and then we have a large set of composite emotions no? say happiness, sang, uh, happiness, sadness, anger, surprise, uh, disgust. Okay. Uh, these are the feelings okay, which are considered to be uh, no, basic emotions. Now, two emotions can fuse together to give another set of emotion what is called as composite emotions. Okay. Now, out of the basic emotions, if I have inability understanding or expressing certain types of emotions, it is a great cause of concern. No? Say, uh, imagine a situation, no? you are sad and I am not able to perceive that uh, no, you are in the state of sadness. There will be a gross mismatch between you and me. Okay. In alexithymia, this is what happens. Okay. Think of uh, no, uh, cultural norms. For example, uh, in our culture, India, the usual social expectation is that the negative emotion okay, has to be masked. Masked means, uh, even if you are, no, uh, say you have extreme negative feeling for me, okay, you do not express it, rather you cover it with another set of emotion. Okay. So, say for example, you have been invited to, uh, to somebody's house for a party and you are given something to eat which is completely distasteful. You take the first bite and uh, the host asks you, so how is it? Okay. And our cultural norms does not allow you to say that I am sorry, no, it is extremely bad. Okay. You cannot say so no? and you say mm, it is good, it is good okay. and uh, that uh, goodness does not actually represent your inner feeling, but it complies to the social norm. Okay. Uh, you invite me uh, on your birthday party, I bring a gift which you already have in your house. Okay. I bring a toy, I bring a pen set, I bring some book which you already have, no? but then I and then I ask you, so how, uh, how is the gift and you say very good, very good, I did not have it. Okay. This is what the cultural expectation is. Compare our culture with the Japanese culture, where the social protocol demands you to neutralize the feeling. Okay. Same situation, no? you did not like the food, uh, but there is how is the food and, no, and you have a very blank face. Okay. In our kind of case, we will put a smile, mm, it is good, it is good. No? In their case, you neutralize the emotion. Okay. Different social norms demand certain uh, things from you that even if you are in this situation, uh, adhere to the social norm. I remember an interesting situation, a uh, German colleague of mine at one point in time, uh, he had his birthday most probably and uh, a friend brought a gift for him. He just opened it up and said, oh, I did not, uh, I did not uh, like it. So, can take it back. Okay. In our culture, if you do that, it will be a great insult to the person who has brought the gift. He will never ever come to your party you know? and he will say that how uh, know, uh, displaced uh, you are in terms of your intellectual and emotional capabilities. You know? that, uh, this is a great disrespect that you show to a guest 
and later on I asked him that uh, is it okay or is it something very peculiar that you had done and he said it is perfectly okay. No? Uh, we have this liberty, if I do not like the gift, I can uh, give you back, no, that, so that you return it to the shop and that is it, that is the end of the matter. One place where people do not take it as an offence, in one place in our situation, it will be <laughs> the greatest offence no, that can break the relationship forever. Okay. So, that type of an emotional uh, competence, you are you know, with growing age, you are supposed to you know, behave like that and then the social competencies. No, there are a large set of social norms, there are certain set of social skills that you are certainly supposed to display. Okay. Uh, let me take a very straightforward example and then I would try to complicate it a bit. Uh, I am sure all of you are carrying a mobile phone right now, true. Okay. Now, you are told by the academic office, there is a mail that comes to all of you that fine you should not be using your mobile phone in the academic area okay. uh, or if you are carrying it, you should not be putting it on a ringtone mode, no? put it on a silent mode. Okay. I do not know how many of you have put your phones on silent mode, every day we hear one or the other ringtone here. Okay there is certain degree of, I remember another example, no? I went for one of these IIT uh, based examinations to one of the areas nearby and uh, I was sitting in that very uh, place where as institute representative, I had to talk to uh, the instructors there and the director there uh, of the examination which was supposed to be conducted the next day. <coughs> So, uh, at the end I did ask uh, the presiding officer who happens to be the head of that institution uh, that what is the arrangement that has been made for uh, those who candidates who would be willing to deposit their uh, mobile phones and would like to collect it back after the examination ends. Okay. And uh, somebody made a comment. Uh, that this is uh, you know, um, one of the bad jobs that we have to perform in terms of collecting mobile phones, retaining it for 3 hours and then returning it back. And then the principal said a very interesting thing. He said that one of his daughter uh, had uh, recently gone to uh, Delhi for education and uh, <coughs> she was in one of those uh, private hostels. And uh, in one hostel, they got admitted, okay, they got the room, but then left it within one day and moved to the other hostel, because <coughs> the hostel in charge said that mobile phones are not allowed in this hostel. Okay. Whereas, the mother of this girl uh, said that every day we will you know at least we will talk once. So, you definitely want a place where mob mobile phone should be round the clock available to your child. You decide to quit a hostel for which you had paid the uh, money simply because they do not allow your daughter to keep the mobile phone. Okay. Now, here was a presiding officer, the principal of the institution who says that very recently I myself have experienced one such situation and I have tried to allow my child carry it and therefore, shifted the hostel itself altogether I have changed the hostel. The other person who is going to you know, act as an invigilator says that it is a great uh, discomfort to us, because we have to uh, you know, hold it for 3 hours and then um, match it whose mobile phone is this and then accordingly distribute it. It is another headache for which we are not being paid. Okay. Now, imagine other types of situations, we will uh, mobile phone and you remain constant, the situations will now keep varying come to another situation, where you are sitting in the class, it has happened several times here okay, and suddenly you receive a call. The moment you receive a call, everybody starts looking at you and because everybody starts looking at you, therefore, you feel in the state of discomfort. The discomfort did not come out of the fact that the phone suddenly you know uh, your phone started ringing, but discomfort came because others started looking at you. So, you were under scrutiny, your social competence says cut it. Okay. 
you must have seen uh, people know who would you know still receive the call and very uh, you know slowly they will whisper yes i am in the class right now okay means this phone has to be attended a phone call cannot you know you cannot disconnect it it has to be attended one situation other situation you just cut it later on you call back and say i was in the class yeah therefore i couldn't call you the third situation you cut the phone but immediately type a message in the class will call you later send variable possibilities no all of them reflecting one or the other type of social competence now let us take a weird example this is something that we have been doing in this we will be continuing doing this now in throughout this semester take a weird example uh, a situation where uh, you are told that somebody has died okay and uh, you should go there to pay a tribute to the person who has expired you go there okay and while you go before uh, the dead body and you sit quietly you receive a sms joke situation demands you to be very sad joke demands you to laugh okay it invokes certain degree of laughter in you what do you do okay great degree of social competence is needed no? so you feel laughing and you say so how did he die your laughter no gets no you deliberately have a control over your orofacial muscles to contain your laughter and then you ask no as if this was there was an itching here and i didn't say oh, how did he die the other could be no and then you say so how did he die you just close your mouth as if you are in a great pain no and in between you smile okay or you are really very pained and this joke doesn't make you smile at all there could be all types of possibilities no so social competence would basically mean uh, that whatever is the context specific requirement you fulfill it if the situation demands you to laugh you laugh okay yeah, even though you have not understood the joke because everybody else is laughing therefore you also laugh so that you are not made an <laughs> odd man out okay second situation everybody is in under pain everybody is uh, you know uh, showing grief you cannot have a smile on your face okay uh, it reminds me of a very interesting story uh, usually media houses uh, they prepare a certain uh, no special uh, segments uh, when they know that somebody is about to die for example say if you have a uh, novel laureate here or if you have a celebrated politician okay somebody who is very popular among the mass and you know that is is in, is in the hospital is in a critical state will might die in the coming days so what happens if he dies and then therefore you start making you make a 10 minute capsule 15 minute uh, program half an hour program <coughs> that those certain things are done in anticipation so this is a story related to one such situation where uh, one of uh, popular uh, political leader was on the death bed uh, one had people were expecting that uh, today or tomorrow he might die and therefore the news readers at that time uh, they used to and those was the days when these many channels were not there no so the news reader would uh, bring a white shirt or a sari okay so that in case you know uh, the news has to be aired that x has died i can you know very quickly put a white shirt or a white sari and then sit in front of the camera to give this news now uh, i know this situation that many people used to come with uh, you know the white clothes with them so that it's a in our culture it's considered to be a uh, you know significant color when uh, you have to mourn now uh, this uh, person who finally got this chance okay uh, before he was on duty and this news had to be aired and he had put the he had changed his cloth had put the white one sat in front of the camera to read the news 
but they are also expected know that you make a sad face and they say that uh, no this is to inform you and then you read out the news okay but while he was reading the news it was say like you know if 10 of us are the impaneled news readers and all of us are struggling with white cloth each okay that i'll get this chance i'll get this chance finally x gets the chance okay and uh, this whole uh, feeling of winning no that i have won over the remaining nine okay was visible on the face okay so you are supposed to you know read a news in the state of grief you have to put sadness on the face okay or you have to modulate your voice accordingly and then read out this news but while you read the news uh, you know you have a little uh, twist on the side of your lip suggesting that you were actually happy getting this chance okay no uh, now you see no there is one uh, level of professional expectation from you there is one level of social expectation from you and there is one level of personal feeling that you had experienced all three combines together okay so in terms of uh, no characteristics of healthy development what is expected is that you have an adequate frame of reference you also have essential competencies with you then you should also be somebody who is uh, no self directed okay so you know who you are so you have an adequate self identity you have you have uh, no independence from social influence okay which is rare to achieve okay a uh, certain degree of social influence by default will always remain with us but then you should be able to you know overcome that influence uh, at most of the time especially when the social influence doesn't allow you the full opportunity of growth and development and you should also be able to manage your stress okay so as to provide a meaningful direction to uh, your own trajectory of life okay now having a complete sense of self identity who am i would also mean that i also know who i am not what are my strength and i also know what are my weaknesses i know who am i and i also know that i cannot be like x y and z okay that would actually reflect the adequate self identity by default we are uh, social creatures and that to uh, know people belonging to collectivist culture will have more and more of social influence but then there could be situations where you realize that the social influence needs to be bypassed okay you need to surpass it completely okay simply because it doesn't allow you the opportunity to grow properly and then you also know that uh, life does invite certain stress but then uh, you should be able to manage it properly so that you are finally able to move in a direction which you find meaningful you remember when we were looking at the maintenance need okay the last need was hope okay that you are able and the second last was value and uh, meaning no that you are always able to provide a meaning to the act in the life that you are engaged in okay and then the other uh, characteristics of healthy development is personal growth and self actualization where okay uh you tend to finally achieve the capability that you have so you achieve your full potential okay and you have that sense of fulfillment you know that i had this i aspired for this i worked hard and finally this is what i achieved by and large in life uh, for majority of the people would be that you achieve little less than what you actually thought of so you start you know trying to achieve say level 10 but finally uh, you achieve only level 8 but then adjustment would mean that you are happy even achieving level 8 okay and although you still have appreciation for all those uh, who attained the 10th level you are happy that fine i could attain level 8 but then you also know that this is not end of achievement no this is one phase of achievement the second phase of achievement will continue okay so this whole uh, sense of personal growth and actualization also plays an important role and this is also an important denominator of human adjustment process